In a week that started with International Women's Day and ended with Mother's Day, it should have been a week where women felt celebrated and empowered. Instead, we're feeling exhausted, frustrated, saddened and silenced. The case of murdered woman Sarah Everard has brought shock and anger to all, but for most women, her story is one that hits very close to home. Sarah first went missing on Wednesday the 3rd of February after walking home from a friend's house that evening. The case quickly gained traction on social media with a missing persons post for her being shared far and wide and is likely why this story has had so much press attention. Tragically, as we now know, she never made it home. London Met Police Officer Wayne Cousins has been charged on suspicion of kidnapping and murder. Sarah's story has prompted many women to speak out in anger at the endless violence seen against women, and many have taken to social media to tell their own stories. We all have a story of sexual abuse or harassment. I could probably give you five examples of my own right now. This also follows from a recent survey that revealed 97% of women have been sexually harassed or abused. To us, Sarah did all the things we as women are told we are supposed to do to avoid the exact thing that happened to her. We're told to stick to brightly lit streets when walking at night, although we should avoid walking at night if we can. Told to wear bright and recognisable clothing, call or text a friend on the way back, carry keys in our hands as a possible weapon if we need it, wear sensible shoes in case we need to run. As women, we are constantly asked to change our behaviours to avoid bad things happening to us. But why is it such a crazy thing to just ask men not to hurt us? The debate this week has led to the not all men brigade weighing in with their two cents. I know there's violence against women, but it's not all men. Unless you are actively fighting to end violence against women, and that includes calling out your sexist mates jokes, creepy actions on nights out, having the boys will be boys attitude, calling women derogatory slurs, then you're also part of the problem. And that's it, isn't it? The attention that this is getting is forcing many to look at their own actions. And while no, of course not all men are rapists and murderers, and not all men will incite violence against women, there have probably been times that you, as one of the good guys, have done something to make a woman feel uncomfortable probably without even knowing, and these smaller, unchecked actions leads to a society that upholds rape culture. That doesn't make you an inherently bad person, but you just can't ignore or deny the problem because it's making you feel uncomfortable, or because it's not something that exists to you. Women don't have that luxury to ignore this. The ironic thing is that some men will also pipe up and say, well, we're scared we could get mugged at night too, and who is that by? Other men. So can we not agree that men and violence is a problem? Not all men pigeonholes the narrative into just focusing on murderers and rapists, passing them off as rare occurrences by sick individuals, without looking at the wider spectrum of unchecked attitudes, behaviours and systems surrounding those issues. The sexist jokes, rape jokes, locker room banter, slut shaming, the lingering look at a cleavage, drunkenly touching up women in bars, problematic porn, it all feeds into a wider, normalised rape culture. And while the majority of us know that rape and murder and domestic abuse is bad and would likely never do it, as a collective society, our attitudes to women are so filled with disrespect and contempt by allowing these things to go unchecked that it becomes very easy for people's views to fall into the more extreme spectrum. We live in a society that was built by men for men, but women make up 50% of the population. We deserve space just as much as men. We deserve a voice just as much as men, and attitudes must change. And if there's anything that the last few days have shown, it's that women's words are far too often shut down. So actually, yes, we need men to check themselves, check their friends, and step up to try and fight this problem. This is not just a woman's issue, this is everyone's issue. And yes, domestic abuse against men is also an issue, and yes, men's mental health is extremely important, but raising awareness about one issue does not diminish the other. Not all men has the same energy as all lives matter. We know all lives matter, but that's not the problem that needs attention right now. Many black women are feeling very hurt and forgotten right now that there has been so much noise surrounding the death of a white woman, when many black women and men have met the same tragic fate without so much as a whisper, and for that I say I am truly sorry. We cannot win if it does not include all of us. With all the noise this week, did we even notice that it's been a year since Brianna Taylor was killed by police while sleeping in her home? 
and that the officers have still not been arrested or charged. Did we notice the post about blessing Ola Sagan? Her body was found on a beach in East Sussex last September and the case has just been deemed as unexplained. Where were the outraged social media posts for her? Where was the vigil? This week also saw the suspected murderer of Nicole Smallman and Bieber Henry plead not guilty and he remains in custody until the trial starts on June the 7th. But what about the officers that took selfies with their dead bodies? Why have they not faced any kind of reprimand? People aren't talking about these misrepresented black women and it's disgraceful. Speaking of police, we cannot overlook the extremely disturbing connections with the police in Sarah's case, Nicole and Bieber's and many others. The suspect currently charged with the kidnap and murder of Sarah Everard is a current serving Met Police officer who was reported for indecent exposure twice just days before Sarah's kidnapping. I don't want to be accused of inciting fake news here, but I absolutely would not be surprised if he had been in uniform at the time he kidnapped Sarah as a way to avoid suspicion and gain initial trust. Studies have found that 40% of households of officers have experienced domestic abuse, the highest profession to contain domestic abusers. I think that's also why we see such abusive, aggressive behaviour from officers at things like protests and arrests, because they know their heavy handedness will be overlooked. A peaceful vigil for Sarah was organised for Saturday evening, although the original organisers reclaimed the streets were forced to cancel the official gathering when the Met Police threatened to fine them if any large gatherings formed. Of course, this did not stop people from heading to Clapham Common Bandstand to lay flowers and pay their respects to Sarah and many other women that have been lost to violence. The vigil was entirely peaceful, emotional and demonstrated a profound sisterhood. After the silence, many of the groups started chanting in solidarity and some were seen with banners and boards reading things like educate your sons and we will not be silenced. Witnesses report that there was a police presence from early on, which saw crowds starting to form from around 5.30, 6pm. However, they did not intervene. It wasn't until darkness fell that the police started to use brute force to disperse the crowds, with the group starting to chant, shame on you, our officers, and many taken to social media to condemn the violence caused by the police. Metropolitan Police Commissioner Dame Cressler Dick defended the actions, saying that the gathering had become unlawful for under COVID-19 restrictions and had to act. I ask, however, if the gathering was so unlawful, why did officers not intervene earlier? They could have allowed people to place their flowers, light a candle and have a moment or two of silence and then ask them to move on. But instead, they allowed the crowds to gather, waited for it to get dark, and then infiltrated the front of the group, causing everyone to gather together even closer and start to use excessive, unnecessary violence to remove people. This trend of demonstrations or protests turning violent once the police get involved is becoming more and more frequent and echoes the BLM marches of last year. I think sadly for many, it is only just now that we're realizing the true extent of police brutality. This was a peaceful vigil attended by majority women, yet the police still got violent with attendees. In contrast, the week before saw football fans flock to city centres to celebrate wins in huge groups, many without masks or social distancing, and while it was condemned by many, saw no intervention or violence from police. This is becoming all the more concerning when we connect it to the new police, crime, sentencing and courts bill that Priti Patel is trying to get passed in Parliament which will see tougher laws on protesting and give police more rights to shut down any protest or gathering that is considered a public nuisance or results in any form of disruption. Uh, newsflash, that's the exact point of a protest, to cause disruption to send through a message. The government is trying to silence freedom of speech whilst also giving more rights to police officers who were already far too dangerous. Labour was initially going to abstain from voting on the bill which is being presented in Parliament today, but growing pressure from inside and outside the party has forced Keir Starmer to rethink and they are now going to vote against. As former Director of Prosecutions, I'm sure it is actually paining him to have to vote against this bill as an avid supporter of the police. Keith, maybe it's time you step down and let a true Labour leader make the decisions. 
any decision to be honest because it seems impossible that you are able to make one and stick to it. While we must stay safe against COVID-19, we cannot allow our voices to be silenced on anything. We cannot allow the government to remove our right to peacefully protest injustices. We live in a democracy and the government has to be held to account for their wrongdoings. Priti Patel, Cressa Dick, Boris Johnson, Keir Starmer. Shame on you all. To anyone that has found this week all too heavy and emotionally draining, please look after your mental health and log off socials if you need to. We must look after ourselves and our minds. My thoughts and love are with the family and friends of Sarah Everard and the many women who were taken before her.